Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Hyung Seok. Uh, I'm presenting our paper, The Assembly is Hard. This is a joint work with my colleague, Suming Kim, Juno Lee, and Gang Guk Ji, and my advisor, Sang Gyo Cha. Static binary routing is imperative to software security because it allows adding security features into binary without access to source code. This technique is often used for malware analysis, software hardening, and code repair. There are four kinds of static binary routing techniques. The first three routing techniques are very well known, so they already employed in various fields. Reassembly based static routing technique is recent attempt to overcome the limitation of the other kind of static routing. Reassembly tool translates a binary into locatable code so it allows instrumentation with minimal overhead. However, there is a critical issue regarding the correctness of reassembly result. Can we say the technique works? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Symbolization, the key techniques of reassembly is difficult and the arrow can produce semantically incorrect binary. Here I'm giving, I'm presenting an example of symbolization. On the left hand side, we have compiler gener generate assembly code. The code has two symbolic label. One of the symbolic label name Foo, and the other symbolic label is named bar. The label indicate a specific assembly line, so the assembly code use them to reference the assembly lines. In the middle of the slide, we see the corresponding binary code. On the right hand side, we have reassembler generate assembly code. Symbolization is processed to recover the cross references with symbolic label from the binary. The error causes invalid memory reference and data corruptions. As a result, the, symbol, the reassembly tool produces semantically incorrect binary. So our question is, our question is, can you assure the correctness of reassembly tools? Our ideas to use differential testing to find correctness problem. Specifically, we can compare compiler generated assembly code with reassembly generated assembly line to identify errors. However, this approach comes with several challenges. The first challenge is matching the assembly code. Compiler often produce duplicate function body in a different assembly files. Also, the output sequence in assembly files may not precisely match it that of binary target binary. So the challenge here is to know which assembly line corresponds to which binary address. Second, recovering symbolic expression in data section is challenging because not every data value has debug symbol. For example, compiler generic, generated data such as jump table entry has no debug information. Third, same label can have different representation for each tool. In this example, the same label used by LEA instruction are be in two different formats. So how do you address the three challenges? For the first challenge, we find the matched assembly code through the following step. First, we find all possible function in assembly file. Second, we compare their instruction with debug information. Furthermore, we carefully consider compiler generate nov instructions. After confirming the match, we map each assembly code to concrete binary addresses. For the second challenges, we examine how data symbols are referenced in assembly file. Then we search the corresponding instruction in the binary. Based on the, this information, we calculate the data address. 
For the third challenge, we convert every assembly line into normalized form. Specifically, we check the address of symbolic label and then convert the label to have normalized name with corresponding addresses. As a result, we can find reassembly errors by comparing the normalized assembly lines. With the proposed the solution, we now present the design of Reassessor, which is a differential testing framework for reassemblers. First, the concat module merges all compiler generate assembly files, and strip module produces stripped binary. Then, reassembly tool takes the stripped binary and produces assembly file. After that, address mapper module map each assembly line into concrete binary addresses. We apply solution one and solution two to the address mapper module. Normalizer module transform assembly expressions into canonical form. We apply solution three to the normalizer module. Finally, the default module take two normalized assembly code and return list of errors. Now let me present our evaluation. Our data set includes core utils, bin utils, and spec CPU benchmark binaries. We create our data set with various combination of compiler, linker, architectures, and optimization levels. For the evaluation, we selected three state-of-art reassembly tool named Lambler, RetroWrite, and DigitalSAM. It's important to note that these tools support different set of binaries, so we utilize only subset of binary for each tool. We will get three reassembly tools under our testing framework. In this presentation, we focus on addressing the following three research questions. RQ1, can the current, uh, current state of art reassembler always produce compilable assembly files? The answer is no. While learning our experiment, we observed that not all binaries in our benchmark could be successfully reassembled. Furthermore, not every reassembler generate code was compilable. They have syntax error and undefined symbol references. As a result, the reassembly tool produced compilable code for less than 92% of binaries. RQ2, how accurate is reassembler generate code? Reassembler detected diverse symbolization error from reassembler generate code. We observed that the reassembly tool failed to recognize over 3% of symbol expression, which we classify as false negative. Additionally, more than, additionally, more than 3% of cross-references, reassembly tool used different symbol expression for symbol, symbolization, which we classify as false positive. Moreover, we measure the number of repairable symbolization error when preventing data instrumentation. As a result, about 45% of symbolization error repairable when disallowing data instrumentation. Also, the other 54 of symbolization error can be pro problematic regardless of data instrumentation. Fixing the data layout can be a practical heuristic, we believe. Let me show you our demo video to illustrate the impact of simulation errors. In the video, we reassemble the bin errors using TDSSM. The reassemble program seemed to be properly work at first. However, the program crashed when given a certain input. The demo video highlights that simulation error can cause unintended program behavior on the specific condition. Consequently, symbolization error reduces overall reliability of your assembly result, even if some of the errors do not necessarily influence the overall execution. RQ3, 
Can this state of art resemble to sound leader symbol x 64 pi binaries? The answer is no. Position independent executable call pi binaries contain location table to handle absolute address. Also, in the x86-64 architecture, RIP relative addressing is often used to get binary address. For the reason there has been significant interest in x86-64 pi assembly because it seems to be less challenging than non-pi assembly. Furthermore, the author of Letter Wright claimed that there are two can soundly reassemble uh, the bin pi binary without precise control flow graph. However, during the, our study, it was found that more than 6% of symbol expression represented jump table entry, which are not registered in revocation table and not RIP relative addressing. Also, non number reassembly to soundly reassemble the jump table entries. This implies that a precise control graph recovery is essential requirement for pi assembly. We reported our finding to author of the tool to improve the current state of art. In particular, we create the PR and eight issues in their repositories. So this also the research would, would have been impossible without the help of the authors of current reassemblers. In particular, we would like to express our gratitude to Fish Wang from Arizona and Antonio from Grammatech for their support in learning and fixing their tools. To support open science, we release our source code of reassessor and data set on GitHub. In conclusion, we present the first automatic system for reassembler testing, and we validate various strategies and challenges in reassembly. We believe our work provides guidance to researchers who aim to venture into this field. This is end of my talk. Thank you for attention.